teaching about winter camp continuously. And so, God will. We will have it the 28th, 29th, and 30th. That's the plan right now. Uh, we may wind up doing it like we did last year. Uh, it's hard to find a place to let us come. All these big fancy camps think they got to have staff working there. I talked to a lady yesterday about a, big, a nice one up in the mountains, and she said, well, our staff's off at work week. And I said, we don't need your staff. We don't need your staff. They're just be in our way. Uh, just let it rent the place to us. You rent the place to us. We'll take care of it. And uh, she said, no, we don't. Right, they have to be there to supervise. We don't, we don't need your staff. Uh, just tell them, go on. Let us have it. And we'll, we'll take care of it. But they don't like to do that. And they're all off that week of Christmas. So pray about that. Lord's will be done. He'll work things out. Gives them up. 
to a reprobate mind. The word reprobate, you'll see in Romans 1 here in a minute. The word reprobate means void of judgment. Can't even make a, a rational decision. Have you noticed that? And people now, that, you think, how in the world could they be that crazy? That they don't, that they're, they're reprobate. Their definition is woke. When you hear all these people say they're woke, the Bible term for that is reprobate. God, it's almost, I can't say for sure, but it's almost like God giving a whole generation over to say, all right, that's what you're going to do, just go and do it. Now, Romans chapter number one, uh, it said, uh, look at verse number 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing, as that word professor, college, education, themselves be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up. God gave them up to uncleanness, to, uh, to the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Think about that. The Lord, they just kept on, on, on. Finally says, God says, I'm tired of fooling with y'all. You ain't going to listen. It, I mean, just do what any you going to do. Let them, let them go. Lord, have mercy, wouldn't that be a scary thing to shake to be in? God just gave you over to your own wickedness. And, and look at verse number uh, 26. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women, here's the lesbians, did change the natural use into that which is against nature. It's, it's against nature. When a, a person commits the sin of homosexuality, Led the Bible. That's what that said on the police book. That's what the whole country said for hundreds of years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's unnatural. It's a crime against nature. Or like sodomy against nature. Now all of a sudden, the last 20 years, we are the weirdos and mean people for saying that that's wrong. Now, now God gave them up. That's what's happened. He just gave them up and said, that's what you're going to do. I ain't going to stop you. I ain't going to make it. And look here. Verse 27. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Uh, uh, kids get that off TikTok now. And people think, uh, well, I don't watch real, real pornography but you get it closest to edge as you can get on TikTok. That's what you do. And it leaves very little to the imagination. And you're getting the same old sinful, wicked lust that you get anything else. Amen? Amen? Listen, TikTok would have been against the law in this country 50 years ago. You'd, you'd have to go down in some old nasty, evil part of town see what they show on TikTok all again. Oh, by the way, you know where TikTok comes from? China. Yeah, what do you know? Don't you sort of get the idea that somebody over there don't like this country? They are sent, they sent the Wuhan flu. Uh, they're, they're cutting out our auto parts. They're, they're uh, uh, sending this stuff as aimed at children. And China wants to become the number one world power. Don't forget that. TikTok is aimed at children and it comes from China. Wow. Now, uh, <coughs> look, at, if you will, at uh, verse number 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. I ain't going to take time to read all that. But people, I'm going to show you something tonight that I really, really, really would rather not. What we're going to talk about tonight is the next step that they took and are taking. And I've been warning people for years. Yep, you guessed it. You guessed it. You think, oh, it'll never get no more wicked. And here we go again. Yeah. 
So it'll never get no more worse. And then here we go again. And I remember, there's probably people in here who remember me doing this or saying this. And I remember 20 years ago, 20 years ago, maybe, maybe 25, 30. I think back in the late 90s when I first said this. I remember hearing all the news reports. And I remember hearing the, the, the people that interview on the news. And I'm sitting there, my, my mind's like dividing it all up, checking out the scripture and while they're talking. And these guys on there, and they were, they were saying, uh, you, you, it's wrong for you to judge me. I was born like this. I can't help it. I've never liked girls. I've always liked boys. It's been in me ever since I had, and and I remember people on them talk shows like like Phil, Dr. Phil, and uh, and and people like that. And I remember, and I remember sitting there thinking, you know what they're doing? They are convincing the whole generation that they're just as natural as it can be, and just like you was born to like the opposite sex, we we're born to like the same sex, and the generation bought it. Bought it. They bought that line. And I remember sitting there thinking, and I preached it at New Manor, and I preached it here over, over 20 years ago. I said this. If we let this generation of homosexuals convince us they're born like that, the next generation of pedophiles is going to convince us they were born like that. And if you apply that same logic, you'd have to agree with them. You'd have to. You'd have to. We can't help it. We're attracted to it. Uh, can't help who you're attracted to. And by that same logic that they've got themselves into, it's now being taught and pushed in colleges and universities. People, I cannot believe what I'm getting ready to show you, but I'm not surprised. And I'm just taking the tip of the iceberg. The tip of the iceberg. Wes, get me, uh, start getting my light check here, and I'm going to show you a little something here tonight, a little interview. And we are seeing the misuse, and and uh, uh, hold me one on there before you can get them all turned out. We are seeing the abuse of kids like never, ever, 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 ever before. Now, one, one thing that happens before God destroys a whole society is that kids become mistreated, yep. abused, yep. and even killed. It's funny, uh, I don't mean funny, I mean odd, weird, that the, uh, the abortion rate, as I preached a few, couple of Sundays and nights ago, has got to the point where uh, it, it's, it's scary. I got, a, I got a little video, maybe I'll get the audio if I can play it for y'all sometime, where this woman standing in front of a whole crowd of women and they're cheering and she says, she says, uh, she said, listen, she said, everybody, if you get pregnant, run down to the abortion clinic and let them kill that little bee. And all the women scream and holler and cheer. That is a generation that God has given over to vile affections. I'm telling you kids here tonight, you teenagers, I, you better not watch that trash on your phone. You think it's harmless. You think I just play around with it a little bit and it won't really bother me. You think I just I just flirt around a little bit and it won't harm me. But it'll destroy your brain, buddy. You won't even be able to think right. Now look at here. Tonight I'm on the blue one, blue uh, uh, mic and back there, Andy. This thing about harming kids is scary. Kids are being treated. I mean, the abandoned ones, the abused ones. Somebody told me the other night, I was in Kentucky. And this lady was talking to me and the pastor, and the pastor's wife. I think was, she's in a singing group. And uh, she said, the other night, up in Kentucky, she said, the other night, we saw this little girl and boy on the side of the road. Little bitty one, five, six years old. She said, we stopped and said, honey, are you all right? And she said, it was freezing cold. And that little girl said, can we get in your car? She said, honey, where's your mama? She said, I don't know. 
She said, Mom, honey, where's your dad? She said, I don't know. They, they, they went somewhere. They left us here. We don't know where they're at. And, and she, she was scared. The woman was scared, thought it might be some kind of a setup, or there might be somebody in the bush who's hiding, going, you know, get them. Going. So they just held there and called the police. And the police, and that, that, she said, that little girl kept saying, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. She said, honey, don't you worry. We're going to get you warm, and we're going to get you some meat. Yep. It's just the other day. I'm sorry, brother. And long story short, the cops came and got them and took them somewhere. I guess they took them to DSS. Uh, but you, you think about the uh, you think about the abortion meals where they believe now that a child can be uh, his life can be taken up until time of birth, and even after birth, if it accidentally survives the abortion. But what you're going to see right now takes the cake. You're going to see a, whatever she is, a licensed sex therapist, whatever in the world that is, some unnecessary nut. And she's going to tell you now that we should think that pedophilia is just as normal as anything else. Now, I'm going to play the whole interview for you. It's about five minutes. So I'm going to sit down and keep quiet for a second. And then we're going to go back and go over it. And this girl, lady from somewhere, I don't know if this is some kind of, y'all can probably tell me, British accent, Australian or something. She ain't, it ain't America. But the woman saying this is in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. What's this? If I can get it, go ahead. Uh, make sure I'm on in. Blue mic. And we'll try to get some sound here. Had it a while ago. All right, let's see here. Blue mic. Should be on. I'm sorry. It's on, it's just not loud enough. Ain't that a strange thing? Uh-huh. No, the devil's fought this all evening. Isn't that a strange thing? Did some one of y'all touch this when you was up here one day? Keep your hands off stuff like this. <laughs> take, take a young and that word. Now let's try it again. Blue mind worked perfect right before church started tonight. We'll try this again. From just one woman. I, I just can't help but suspect. All right. All right. I don't know how it started there, but it started. Amen. All right. Let's try this. Listen to this. Listen carefully to this. Now, I want to bring your attention to a clip that I came across online this Taylor. week, which has now been watched almost two and a half million times. Two and a half million times. It would be dismissed as a one off from just one woman. I, I just can't help but suspect that it is a signpost. It's a potentially horrific social change of which we just need to be aware. It features a sex therapist who works for the Keystone State of Pennsylvania in America, which describes itself as proudly founded in 1681 as a place of tolerance and freedom. Now, don't get me wrong, tolerance, coexisting with people who are causing no harm but are not like us, is good. Freedom, if we mean being the architects of our own destiny as far as possible, that is also, of course, good. But I fear that the clip I'm about to show you might be the start of an insidious creep towards the normalizing of sexual contact with children. Have a listen. Folks, my name is Miranda. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a licensed professional counselor and sex therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I want to talk about minor attractive persons. And I want to talk about minor attractive persons because they are probably the most vilified population of folks in our culture. There's a reason for that. Now, when this lady talks about minor attractive persons, what she means is pedophiles. The Latin derivation of that word, of course, is phil, to love, and ped, child. But, of course, as we know, there is no love involved in the damaging behaviors, which we quite rightly deem criminal. She goes on. 
most folks are making incorrect assumptions about them without actually knowing much about them. And those assumptions create harm for an already marginalized population. You see, it's one thing to argue that abusers require help. They do. You will never hear me advocating castration or public floggings. Remember, abusers are commonly former victims themselves. But there is a difference between arguing for understanding and a system which manages or contains these people and blaming others for judging them or trying to make us feel guilty for rejecting in the harshest terms Amen. such horrific acts. Amen. We are all people first with many different facets or parts of ourselves and this includes folks who are attracted to minors mm -hmm. do you see do you see where this is going yep. you may think a minor attracted person is wrong because they are not the same as you but everyone has rights there's no such thing as good or bad anymore just a murky moral relativity in which you don't have a right to judge someone who is different to you Funnily enough, I think we need a very clear, firm line in the sand when it comes to the sexual interference of children. Amen. Successful civilizations are built upon the protection of the next generation. A society which does not pride itself on keeping kids happy and safe is one which is heading for annihilation. Sexual assault, unwanted, coercive or forceful contact of any form is the most effective way of psychologically damaging a young person in both the long and the short term. Some survivors will cope better than others, but a full recovery from such violations is rare. Let's talk about what a minor attracted person is or who they are. This term simply means that the person has an enduring sexual or romantic attraction to minors. They've not chosen this attraction, just as the rest of us have not chosen whatever our attraction is. You don't get to choose to be heterosexual or to be gay or, or whatever you are. So they're just trying to humanize pedophiles. And in some ways, that is okay. Like truly understanding what drives people to act so abnormally is critical if we want to stop future crimes. But aligning a criminal act with normal sexual preferences is potentially very dangerous. Yeah. Do you see where this is going? You may think a minor attracted person is wrong because they are not the same as you, but everyone has rights. There's no such thing as good or bad anymore. Just a murky moral relativity in which you don't have a right to judge someone who is different to you. Funnily enough, I think we need a very clear, firm line in the sand when it comes to the sexual interference of children. Amen. Successful civilizations are built upon the protection of the next generation. A society which does not pride itself on keeping kids happy and safe is one which is heading for annihilation. Yep. Sexual assault, unwanted, coercive or forceful contact of any form is the most effective way of psychologically damaging a young person right. in both the long and the short term. Some survivors will cope better than others, but a full recovery from such violations is rare. Let's talk about what a minor attracted person is or who they are. This term simply means that the person has an enduring sexual or romantic attraction to minors. They've not chosen this attraction, just as the rest of us have not chosen whatever our attraction is. You don't get to choose to be heterosexual or to be gay or, or whatever you are. So they're just trying to humanize pedophiles. And in some ways, that is okay. Like truly understanding what drives people to act so abnormally is critical if we want to stop future crimes. But aligning a criminal act with normal sexual preferences is potentially very dangerous. She makes no effort to illuminate the abnormality of paedophilia. She makes no mention that it is most commonly the result of learned behaviors, a pathological, psychological disorder, right. which people like this therapist are apparently seeking to normalize. And this is from TikTok, a social media platform owned by the Chinese government and aimed at children. Yep. Imagine your daughter or granddaughter experiencing unwanted molestation from an adult and just wondering if you should bring this to someone's attention. Yeah. 
Over 90% of child victims know their offender, with almost half of them being a family member. But suddenly, this poor child wonders whether she should complain. Maybe this is okay. Maybe this is just like being gay or, or straight. Maybe she doesn't want to be judged for making a fuss. I don't know. Maybe there are people hoping that by the time the guest list to the Epstein Maxwell parties is released, we'll have all bought into the idea yeah. that paedophiles are simply minor yeah. attracted people who deserve our understanding. So all I'm saying is let us just be awake to this phenomenon, shall we? All right, we'll stop right around. She heard a second. Uh, we'll look at her again and just say I don't want to look at her too much. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just a second here. Couple things. What what she's saying is, if a if a 50, 40, 50, 30, 60 year old man likes little six and seven year old boys or girls, that that is normal, and we should not be judgmental of that person. Now, this happens before a society self-destructs. People, we, it's, the floodgates are opened up. I, I mean, me and you sit here tonight and you think, how in the world could anybody even, even think, you know, a little kid, how can you even, we, we, it, it boggles our mind how a person even thinks like that. But, what happens is they look at pornography and they talk filth and they talk, and one sin is progressive. One sin leads to another sin. That's why I tell you, don't let no sin in your life. Because every sin always leads to other sin. The devil ain't never happy to get you to commit one sin and stop. He's going to push you on to other stuff. And, <coughs> and the devil, and I want now, we're going to look at this lady here again and I'll stop her here and give me a comment or two. All right? Dim that one just a little bit later. Therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I want to talk about minor attracted persons. Minor attracted persons. See how nice that sounds? Yeah, trying to make We would say some pervert yeah. that lusts an after kids and that got a psychotic disorder in his brain. Yep. Yep. But she called it minor attracted kids to adults. You know, you know, you, 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 people in here has got little kids. You can't turn your back on the Walmart anymore. You got to watch them. They can't, you can't just say, well, you go over there and play in the toys, honey, and I'll pick it up like people used to. You can't do that no more. You ought to look, they'll be gone. I mean, it happens every day. And the world tonight is loaded with truckloads of little boys and girls being shipped out to the perverts and sell them to perverts. Right now, while we're here tonight. You say, Brother Danny, why do you have to do that? I don't know. Why didn't Noah have to tell them the flood was coming? Why did the prophets tell them the judgment was coming? People, we are under the judgment of God in this country. You hear me tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're asking God to pour out wrath on this country. That's what she says. And I want to talk about minor attractive persons because they are... Probably the most vilified population of folks in our culture. You know what vilified means? Talk bad about being mean to. Yeah, and, and, and I don't think, I don't have a right to go up and punch somebody. I mean, if they touch my kid. But, but uh, I, you don't have the right to take the law in your own hand. But the law should prosecute those cases like that. And this, this Epstein, the more and more you realize, the more Jeffrey Epstein didn't commit suicide. And, and ain't no telling who's on that list that went down to that pedophile island they call. And then this this thing's so rotten. They say they say that Hollywood is absolutely eat up with this kind of stuff. All those little cute little movie stars, little little, little kids growing up. Some of them have to make do favors and make deals and everything else to get where they are in show business. And. What I don't understand, I'm saying, some of y'all might not like me saying this, but I don't understand how that, how come it took a journalist from wherever, where y'all think that girl's from? Great Britain. Great Britain, whatever. Wherever she's from, where is the American news on this? Where is Fox News, people? The great, wonderful Christian Fox News. I ain't even mentioned it! They're covering up a bunch of junk for somebody else. Right. Amen. Amen. Come on. Preach it, brother. You 
preaching it. Or Sean Hannity. Yeah, exactly. Or Megan, what's her name? Well, that, how come they don't put this in Pennsylvania? You can't tell me they don't know about this. Yes, sir. Can't tell me they don't know where they at. Where? Well, to take up again. We're on your side. We're for the family. All right? Speak up against it. They, there's such a big ring of sex perverts in this country that nobody's, anybody's scared to say anything about it. I mean, all that pizza gate and all that, I don't know how much that stuff's true, but I, you, you, you just don't know nowadays, buddy. You just absolutely don't know. Now, watch this. These folks are making incorrect assumptions about them. We're making incorrect like they're a sinner. If you think that's a wicked sinner, won't go lust touch my five-year-old, you are making an incorrect assumption of them. No, you're not. No, you're not. Listen, they, you heard that girl say that a minute ago that the, one of the surest ways to psychologically permanently damage a kid is mess with them like that when they're little. And so they're scarred for life, brother. Scarred for life. It messes them up on down through the year. Some of them can recover. Some of them can become normal. Some of them can have a normal married life and all that. But many of them just stay messed up their whole life. And repeat that same behavior. And we're supposed to say, that's okay? Without actually knowing much about them. And those assumptions create harm for an already marginalized population. For all people first with many different facets or parts of ourselves. And this includes folks who are attracted to minors. Talk about what a minor attracted person is or who they are. This term simply means that the person has an enduring sexual or romantic attraction to minors. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you what. The fact that they can get on there and talk that way, and anybody will listen, shows how bad this country is. Shows how bad it's true. Amen. It's true. If you got on TV or on a platform like that and said that 50 years ago, but you've been arrested. Yes, you've been arrested for suggesting that. Yes, Good night in the morning, people. Look at that. They've not chosen this attraction, just as the rest of us have not chosen whatever our attraction is. Well, let's see now. They started out young, then they got into perversion, they got into pornography, went down the truth tube, and the devil gave them that, and turned them into that. They hit you. It was a choice. You don't get to choose to be heterosexual or to be gay or, or whatever you are. Not true. All right, give me some ice now, Wes, and I'm going to say a couple things I'll be done. Now, I told you, if we let that last generation of homosexuals convince us I was born this way, then this generation of pedophiles will convince us I was born this way. So tonight, there you go. There you go. What do you think about that? And that's, you think this world's bad? You ain't seen nothing yet. The Holy Ghost is still here. The Christian church is still here. But it ain't got the one way to go, and that's down. You're going to see more filth this year, coming year you've ever seen before. You'll see more uh, child abductions and, and, and murder and abortion and uh, more than you've ever seen before. You're going to see it get worse and worse and worse and worse. God said to be the deceivers and be deceived, and the world will act worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And what are we going to do about this? No, I'm, I'm done. Uh, we're going to work, worship, we're going to work, we're going to witness. Amen. The ship's sinking, y'all. That's right. Going down. The Titanic has hit the iceberg. America is going down like this. Now what men you need to do is get off our seats and get on fire for God and snatch every little boy, every little girl. Uh, listen, we, we have a hundred plus kids here on Sunday morning. You probably guarantee probably 40 of them have been abused. Yes, sir. Maybe higher than that with us kids. Every Sunday right here in our church. Hey. What if she'd be that tolerant over a hellfire preacher telling people going to, uh-uh. 
Suddenly, he, he, didn't, he didn't choose to be like that. It's all right if he pleased that way. She wouldn't take that for you. She's perverted herself. That's what the book said. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, you hear me and hear me well. This thing is swirling down. May God help us. Amen. I'll show you some more here in a few weeks. And I, you say, well, Brother Daniel, this makes me sick. Why do you do that? So we'll get our head. Maybe you'll go visit him. Maybe you'll get out some tracks. Maybe you'll do something for God. Maybe, maybe he'll shake you a little bit. Maybe he'll wake up. And say, God, I don't want the world. I, I, I know the world's going down, but I'm going to do my little part. Amen. And I want to do something for God while I can. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed. Let's stand with our heads bowed. If this is coming to the piano, please. And I just, I don't know about you, but I'm just going to take a minute and pray. God, give me the burden that I need in these last days to, to, to serve Him and do right. I want to be a better bus worker, better pastor, better visitor, a better prayer, a better man, a better husband, a better father, a, a better grandfather, a, a better, listen, this is our kids. I'm looking at Frankie over there, y'all, and, and all them, my goodness, and little kids. We're talking about little kids. They'd snatch them up in a second, put them on a truck somewhere and go sell them. Not think twice about it. Like a dog. God help us tonight. Are we going to have a burden? Or are we just going to sit back and watch football all day and let the world go to hell? Amen? I mean, there ain't nothing more wrong with the football game. Where's our burden, folks? Where's our burden? Let's come and play. Go ahead. Father, help us tonight. Oh, God, help us tonight. God, give us a burden. God, give us a burden for our neighbors. For little boys and little girls, help us, God, not to be so self-sufficient, backslidden, full of food, full of uh, uh, money, and, and full of ease, and full of pride, and, and not do nothing for you. I pray that you bless every single person here tonight. Move in every heart and every life. God bless these tonight, Lord. Have you in our hearts, Lord. God, do what ought to be done in our lives. Lord, bless everybody here this evening. Lord, you know the need. Lord, here we are at this time of Thanksgiving uh, when the world's all having a big party, Lord. Lord, help us not to forget them little boys and those little girls and those teenage girls that are being sold and mistreated and beat and stabbed and got on drugs and abused and taken advantage of. God, help us, Lord. God, give us a burden. Give us tracks and give us witness, Lord. Help us to stop giving to people. Help us, Lord, to go where they are. We reach them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Lord, let the light shine all over this community, around the world. God, bring people in here saved by your grace. Have you in our hearts now. Go with us this week, Lord. Help us, God, we pray. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not right with God. Maybe you're here tonight and you need to get right with the Lord. I don't know. Need to make that step. Be a good time to come right now. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Be a good time to come right now. Amen. Some still praying tonight. Some still praying. Amen. Yes. Can you say that tonight? Lord, have thine own way. My life. God bless you.
We have to hear that in the UK. What's going on here in this country? Where's the news? Fair and balanced. Where are they at? Think about it. Oh, Lord. Amen. All right. All right. Now I'll give you a burden now to pray for this week. And I do hope every one of y'all have a great Thanksgiving. We're going to have a special Thanksgiving service Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, come pray and bring somebody with you. And uh, the Lord will bless you for, for it tonight. Okay? All righty. Then we're going to have a bus meeting next week, y'all. All our bus workers getting ready for our big day on the 18th. On the 18th. We're going to, I'm trying to raise about $3,000. Uh, 30 people give $100. We'll have it just like that. Uh, for the bus kids Christmas. And then we'll have some extra people buy bicycles and stuff like that. So, uh, if you'd like to do that, please let me know and, uh, and be a part of that. I plan to, and I know that many of you will too, and we're going to uh, uh, give them something nice. And there'll be parents come that day, there'll be people here that day that have never been here to church and uh, to, to get that gift, and uh, the Lord get all their hearts. So, we're excited about that, okay? Amen. What our church does for bus kids, I, I've seen some group uh, last year, and it showed a little group that said, uh, and it put it in the paper and made it like a big deal. So this youth group prepared the boxes and gave it to some old people. And I thought, that's great. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's, that's wonderful. And I thought, man, they don't, they have no idea what this church does for poor people. Right. Right. And I don't want to be in the newspaper. I don't want to be on the news. I've had it before and I don't want it. Yeah, they'll burn you. The people are crazy. They're led by the devil. We don't want nothing to do with the news media. Uh, you know, I stay away from here. Stay out of here. But uh, they, the church right under their nose is doing what somebody said something one time about uh, uh, people, somebody being racist or something like that. And I said, listen, listen, this church right here does more for minorities as far as buying them stuff, giving them stuff, than the other minority churches are doing. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Start that jump with me, y'all. I'm telling you, it's, this is, this, we're on the battlefield. We're getting the job done. We ain't playing church and playing politics. We're getting the job done. Come out and help us Saturday morning. Lord bless you. All right. I'm done. Let's pray. Uh, be dismissed. Uh, be sure and fellowship a little bit. It's going to be cold tonight. Uh, so everybody bundle up in the morning. And... Uh, have a good week. Be here Wednesday night. God will bless you for it, okay? Uh, let's let's pray. And uh, Blake and, and the Melissa and Presley still here for a day or two. Uh, we're going to take them over to the famous cooks tomorrow. And they're going to get to see the cooks. Right? And so Blake, this is a word of prayer.